I want to talk uh, very quick about design pattern and React, uh, specifically about the design pattern named Memento. So I'm going to use a TypeScript uh, with React and talk about something that is very object oriented. Yeah. Just to do something interesting. I mean, most of the time it's just seeing the same code. So let's try to, dis to do something different. Uh, in modern front end, we forgot about this thing called design patterns and like they are there for, for years. And for every challenge that we've got, there's probably a way to do it. There's probably a very well-defined way to do it, but most of the time we're not familiar with it, which is very sad. So hopefully I'm going to show you a design pattern that came from, I don't know, at least I think 20 years, at least, called Memento. And it's coming to solve this problem, not the movie. Have you seen the movie? Have you seen the movie? Great movie. Yeah, check it out. How do I restore an object to its previous state? Now, if you use if you use Redux with React, I mean, not a big deal. We don't have. A, we try to to extract the state out of our component, keep it in our store. We can we can take an action and restore it. Not a big deal. But what if you are not using React? So let's try to do something interesting in this like ten minutes maximum. Let's try to implement uh, like a very, very hardcore object-oriented uh, design pattern in a hardcore object-oriented way and see how we can implement this memento by the book. So first of all, the terms, and this is the original terms. And of course we can use the other ones, but let's, let's, let's go with it. The originator, all right? This is the component. This is the origin where the origin state is. Uh, we need to implement an interface to create and restore a memento for itself. So if you like a component to support an undo feature, it needs to implement some kind of an interface. It needs to know how to uh, restore a state and how to save a state. All right, make sense? All right, the memento itself is just the state that we extracted from the component. This is our memento. We want to take it out of the component so we can save it somewhere and restore it later. We're going to save it in an object called caretaker. Now, all right, you don't use, need to use the original names, but if we're here to learn about like antique design patterns, because they're very relevant, let's use the original names just, just for fun, all right? But this caretaker is just like a, a, a cache object. And the whole reason of this existence, I mean, why do I need uh, an object called Memento and another object called Caretaker or whatever if all I want is just to, to, to hold the state and then restore it? Um, it's all about encapsulation. I don't want to, to literally touch the component. I want the, com the, the other part of my app not to be aware of the component until I say it. I want to communicate with this object. I want this a uh, third party class, this uh, caretaker, to run the show. Make some sense? Let's give it a try. All right. So if you want to create a React app with TypeScript, but you're afraid and you don't know how to, how to start, just run this one, create a React app, and add this flag, script versions React script TS, and you've got a fully working project with TypeScript, so it's not a big deal. So right here I've got, uh, I've got the enemy. I've got a React app created with Create React app, but with TypeScript. So let's explore what, what we've got here. All right, so I've got a component. I can add some numbers. This one is not working, not the reset, not the undo. What I really want to do, I want to be able like to calculate some sums. It's very simple. I want to be able to reset the values. I want to be able to destroy this component and I want to be able to press undo and go back to previous state. Make sense? Let's do a quick, uh, quick overview. So this is the sum component. I haven't been too, too creative with names, but basically I've got an input. As you can see here, I've got uh, a mapping, an array of numbers, and I'm showing the results right here. So this component, we don't really care about the implementation. We've got this add right here, but this component holds an internal state. It holds logging all the values and I've got the result, all right? Now the challenge. I want the host component 
which is the app component who used the sum to run the show to be able to extract the state, save it, and restore it. Cool? Let's do it object oriented way. So I'm going to create a class TS. And first, I'm going to define this memento, how, how it looks like. So a class name, memento. And when I'm creating a memento, I can pass any state. But I'm saving the state as a string. Almost. All right? All those shortcuts, that's WebSOM working with TypeScript, which is amazing, I think. Make sense? It can be read only. Why is it important to save it as a string? Let's do the JSON parse right here. Wants to answer? No questions? No? no? All right. Think about it. I want to be able to serialize my state. It's very easy when it's string. Your state should be should be serialized. All right. You, you can take this example and do some nice stuff with it. So we've got this memento, which is basically a class, which basically just a string representation of the state. All right. Next, for every component who wants to be able to to extract its state. I'm going to create an interface. Let's call this interface iMemento. The component will, will have to implement a save method which returns a memento and a restore which accepts a memento and returns nothing. Make sense? Last one is this caretaker, the cache that saves the, the state. So export class caretaker. And right here, I'm going to create a constructor. Actually, no, let's do a private mementos, which is a memento array. We can do it in one line. I'm just, if we're playing with Java like code, let's write a bunch of code for, for nothing, all right? <laughs> Why not? All right, so add memento. We take a memento and just push it, this mementos. Let's push the M and the other way around, get memento. We'll return a memento, and we're going to return uh, this mementos pop. All right, makes sense? Plain JavaScript, uh, two simple classes. One represents a memento, the other one just an interface, so I know what I can implement. And the last one is this caretaker, which basically, basically just holds an array. Who did some C Sharp or Java along the years? All right, quite a few, so familiar. Hopefully from this short, uh, uh, short uh, talk, uh, you'll be convinced that TypeScript with uh, um, React is not too bad. It's actually quite working. All right, let's put it uh, to work. First, I can see I've got some kind of an error. Where is the error? An element access expression should take an argument. What do you want from me? Where? Oh, this is not a type. Thank you. And now, this is the best part, all right? 
This memento undefined, I mean, it can't be undefined. If you're calling pop and there's nothing there, it can be undefined. So actually, it's, it's a good thing because it just catch a potential bug. So I'm going to say, if there isn't anyone, just call a new memento with nothing. All right? So this was the boilerplate plate code. Let's put it to work. I'm going to my app. Again, my app is, uh, is the container. You know what, let's, let's start with a sum, with the component that I wanted to support to be undoable. First thing, I'm going to implement the interface. I'm going to implement I memento. I got an error because I'm not implementing the methods. Let's implement the methods. You can see here, the autocomplete, the code generation, I've got component life, life cycle, new life cycle, deprecated life, life cycle, all coming from React. I need to implement save and restore. So save is going to be very easy. I'm just going to do this. New memento, this state. And for restore, I know I've got a memento. I've got this memento holding an internal state. I'm going to do this. This set state uh, with m. And we're done with this component. Any questions so far? What about the efficiency of this data st structure? Basically, it's just a string. And I'm trying to keep my data, my data in the front end as, as little and neat as possible. And this design pattern, anyway, I'm not going to use it on any da data structure. It's going to be used very specifically in very specific places, like a form, for example. You've got a form, and you're filling everything up and accidentally you did a reset, you went to another page, and you want to restore everything, and you don't want to, to, like, to, to put everything on your Redux state, this can be a great pattern for this, all right? Let's move forward. So, our sum component implemented the interface, and we don't need to touch it anymore. We're going to our container, our app component that wrapped the sum component, and right here, what I did, I took a reference to the sum. So I can call those methods. Make sense? All right. Now, if app is running the show, I want to create an instance of the caretaker. Again, I don't like this name, but we are learning like by the book. I'm going to create new caretaker. Something like this. And let's implement... Um, Let's implement reset. So it's going to be something like this. Uh, I need to check if I've got a reference. So if I've got a reference, if I got this some ref and this some ref current. This is the new way to create a reference in React. So if uh, you're not familiar with this and you're still using the, the, like the old deprecated way to do it with callbacks, you should know that this is the way we're doing reference today, much more easier and clean. So it's nothing to do with the design pattern, nothing to do with TypeScript. You just create a React create ref. You've got this instance of ref. It's wrapping the element. And right here, I'm just referencing the element, all right? So if it looks strange and you haven't used it before, this is React and it's got nothing to do with anything else. All right, so if I've got this reference and I want to reset, I want to do two things. I want to take this caretaker and tell him, add a memento, go to my component, which is this, and call save. That's it. Of course, probably I'm gonna, uh, I want to, to reset uh, the values over there so I can go to this current and call reset. Make sense? This button right here, on click, this reset. Let's give it a try. I've got 12. 12, 12, calling reset, works, all right? So 
So again, take a look at this code. I'm just managing the show. I'm just accessing the component and tell the component, hey, save. And the component is responsible to give me back a memento. All right? And I put this memento somewhere else on the caretaker. Now we can destroy this component com completely. All right. Restore. Or let's call it undo, because this is actually what we're doing. Undo. And for the undo, let me do this check. You can make this code much prettier, but I'm focusing on the pattern right now. I'm not trying like to, to build uh, some kind of utility function around it. So the undo should be easy. I mean, I can go to my sum component, call the restore, and ask for the caretaker, please get me a memento. And that's it. And the component will know how to restore itself. So if I go right here and try this on click, let's do this um, undo. And if I did everything right, I should be able, let's say this is 24, reset, undo 24. Uh, let's try to do like this is 10 and 10, so I've got 44, let's reset. Let's do uh, 3 and 3, 6. Let's go undo to 6 and undo to 44. So let's summarize. Yeah, I know it's not very popular and I did it by purpose. I want to show you some alternatives because most of us, including me, using React the functional way. Maybe you, we throw in some flow, which is great, which is a great library. I use those tools. But there is other way. So if you find yourself feeling more comfortable with TypeScript, with object-oriented concepts, even if you don't, you can give it a try. And of course, you can implement the exact same pattern without TypeScript at all. Because design pattern, it's the idea. It's the definition of how I solve a problem. And this problem, how in a very manageable way, while keeping component encapsulation, I can take the internal state, put it inside, restore it, without feeling like decoupling everything together. Some of you asked, uh, and if you like, uh, I welcome you to check uh, my, my uh, new book, which is, uh, I did a talk about it, and I got some great feedback. Thank you very much. This book is because of you, and I would like to thank my mother as well, who's given birth to me. And I'd like to uh, uh, thank my teacher and a lot of uh, other people. Uh, but that's not the time or the place to do it. But if you use this QR, you can, uh, um, you can uh, grab this book in a very special community price because I'm not trying to make money. I'm just trying to, uh, no, I'm trying to make money. <laughs> Those mech adopters, like, like cost of fortune. <laughs> uh, this was me. My name is Nir. I work at Python Tech. Thank you very much for two things. First, for coming to this event. Hopefully to see you next time. You are awesome. Well, we've got a great community. Let's let's keep it this way. So this is for you. Um, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great night.